This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 38, on the 5th of December 2013, an interview with Daniele Calabrese, CEO of the company Sound Tracker. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DMT One to One Show. Uh, this week, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, Daniele Calabrese, who is uh, the founder of the company uh, Sound Tracker. So, hi, Daniele, and great to have you on. How's it going? How are you? Nice to meet you and uh, great thanks for the opportunity to have a chat today. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to see you and uh, it's all going great. It's uh, raining like crazy here in London, but uh, you're in DC, right, today? Weather is good. I guess it will be around uh, 14 to 15 degrees. Pleasant. Looking forward for my run this afternoon. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, Washington is a play- pretty nice place to go to go jogging. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, Sound Tracker. So what is the company all about uh, and what is the service all about? Soundtracker is the first uh, geosocial uh, music service. It's a platform that allows users to play music, share, uh, discover music with their friends, and also with anybody nearby. Uh, with the power of uh, mobile and location, users are able to play their music, but also discover what music has been played anywhere they are, in Washington, New York, San Francisco, Rome, and so forth. Uh, play the music other people are playing in those locations and allow other people to play your music in that location as well. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your story. So how did you end up in uh, in DC? And, uh, you know, of course, it's not uh, a city where I have a lot of startups, uh, you know, that I interview from. Uh, so tell me more about how you ended up there. Well, I ended up here uh, for study. Um, so I came uh, when I was like 22, uh, so a um, few years back. I'm not going to tell you exactly how many years, but <laughs> you can definitely look at it, you know, uh, by searching my name online. So I came, I did my master's, and then I started working in development, actually. So I was in marketing and communication for the World Bank, so in the international development, uh, working in the Middle East and Africa and, uh, and Latin America, and a bunch of different things like telecom uh, privatizations and uh, reforms, uh, working with small communities, working with ministries, setting up websites, mobile platforms, and so forth. And I did this for a bunch of years. But my passion has always been with startups, with mobile, uh, with technology. I've been fond of doing, you know, since the time of Commodore. I've been reading, by the way, an amazing, amazing uh, um, uh, history of, uh, of Commodore in the shadow of, uh, you know, PC and, uh, and uh, Apple right now. Great story of uh, Silicon Valley and their dog. And um, so I've been always fond of startups, mobile and technology, coming from a background of political science and kind of, uh, you know, uh, sociology in a way. And so in 2008, I decided to leave the World Bank and start Soundtracker, you know, the spark of the iPhone and uh, what was coming, the new wave of, uh, you know, of what happened for Internet in the 90s was becoming for mobile uh, in the year 2000, and that's exactly what happened. So let's talk about Soundtracker as uh, as a service. You know, the core of it is a series of playlists, uh, and uh, uh, so how did you go about setting up uh, those playlists, and how do you feel those uh, you know impact the experience of your users as well? So Soundtracker, from a, a music perspective, it uh, works like an internet radio service. Right. So users go in, uh, log in with their Facebook, uh, um, they go into a search bar. They're able to search for over a million artists, which has a catalog of 22 million songs. They pick the artists they want, up to three. They pick a location if they want from broadcasting their music, and then um, you know they decide to share or not, and the music starts. The right. music comes from a playlist generated by our algorithm that has a bunch of things happening in the background. Mostly has to do with you know similar artists, uh, uh, top songs from those artists, uh, the location of where the session has been created you know, factoring in how many likes those type of songs have. And the music is generated based on uh, these different factors. User starts with an artist, and then uh, we deliver uh, music in streaming from those artists and similar artists uh, for um, uh, multiple hours of listening experience. Of course, that station, it's uh, for the user to play again going forward in the future, but also available to friends in the social feed and also available to anybody nearby based on the location. And uh, your your uh, service has got a strong, uh, uh, as you mentioned at the beginning, you know, geolocation component. Was that uh, part of the initial strategy when you started the company, or did that come later? Soundtracker, it is today the the the, the full um, extend and extension of of the original idea. Yeah. Uh, we started with mobile first. So of course, when I went to San Francisco for the first time in two thousand and eight, and I went to meet the first people and say, okay, we're going to build a mobile music company. And they were asking me, like, so what about the website? Like, well, we don't really need the website. The website is really 
about a conversion mechanism by which people go to Facebook, they see that somebody's playing something, they go in, they play, and then they become mobile users. So it was like uh, pretty much a shock. Of course, now everything is mobile first. So, but I have to tell you that at the beginning, uh, you know, it was a hard sell. Now, with, with mobile first, really what meant for us from the very beginning was focus and focus on what really mobile is about. It's about interaction with the environment around you. It's about interaction with people around you. And, uh, and so the declination or like the understanding of social and location became as a core part of Soundtracker from the very beginning. In fact, you, track, you, you, you soundtrack your life, you can track your friend's sounds, so you, know, you can play with the words as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the idea of you know, having playlists located in, in certain places. You know, I've, I've heard of other companies in the last couple of months that are looking at uh, uh, you know, uh, being able to associate, for example, playlists with, uh, with specific places so you can uh, find those, those kind of things. You know, uh, is this something that you see your users doing? Because, uh, of course, you've been doing this for, for a while now. Do you see people exploring places and at the same time finding playlists that are associated with that place? They do two things. They discover music, they discover people. So it's also an incredible, powerful friend finder and people kind of like similar to my taste finder around your block. They discover your block, your neighborhood, people you, places where you go and travel, people you might be knowing and, you know, eventually rediscover. Uh, so definitely an extension. Users are using it all the time and you buy both the map, um, the people find their true location is like uh, uh, one of the top um, you know, places inside the app on the iPhone and Android. And I can tell you even more, I mean, we're about to build an extension of the experience on the Google Glasses. Oh, and really great. there you tag your world with music. I mean, uh, that was really one of the original ideas that I had. And I think the technology now allows us to be able to tag your world with music. As you walk around, you play, you tag, and you associate a song to a specific place yeah. to the point of like, you know, I've been, I, be, I can be on the beach, I can be, you know, on a, um, on a wall I went for my first kiss and so forth, or my, my run and, and, and the likes. Yeah, absolutely. So looking at uh, how the service uh, uh, has uh, expanded over the last, uh, uh, you know, uh, year or so, how have you, how, how do you see your focus uh, in terms of territory? Uh, did you just expand by word of mouth? Did you make any efforts into any one particular territory just to expand in, in that? Uh, what has been your approach so far? Um, so we grow from uh, zero in the course of the last uh, two and a half years to over four million downloads with over one million active users. Um, the user base is located 25% um, uh, in the US and then 40% uh, or so in Italy with a higher, with a, in Europe with a high concentration in Italy and then in Latin America the remaining people mostly in Mexico, Brazil and Colombia on one end and then uh, we have a presence in, uh, in, uh, in Asia. The way we we grew the user base was in a number of ways. Um, we worked very closely with Microsoft, Samsung, and Nokia over the course of the year. So we, one of the, we were one of the very first few apps uh, building on Windows Phone 7, then Windows Phone 8, and also one of the leading apps for the Nokia Java platform, now it's called the Asha platform. So by working very closely with those two big partners and then with Samsung, we got a, a big exposure on uh, onto their users uh, through the stores. At the same time, uh, uh, you know, we worked uh, with word of mouth, and we start, you know, focusing our partnerships activities with artists, you know, with uh, with blogs and so forth in Europe. And we are planning to do in the next uh, quarters, both in Latin America and uh, and in China. And you talked about uh, your uh, presence as well. You, you are present on a variety of platforms. Uh, uh, how hard is it to maintain? You know, I've, I've spoken to several companies that work in this, uh, in uh, you know, in the music tech space, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to cater for all the different operating systems, uh, especially when it comes to mobile. So, what is your approach on that front? Uh, do you try and be everywhere? Uh, we've been uh, on all platforms uh, in pervasive from day one. So we established the company process procedures, uh, technology, we're working as managing, you know, multi-platform day one. We have a core team of people, we're like 20 people more, I mean, uh, at this current stage, that work on the server, backend, the cloud computing and the API. And that, that these are very robust, documented, that allows us to then uh, add on or expand, uh, you know, uh, our presence on mobile. Core, iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, and then around that core, we have the HTML5 that has been used on the web, mobile web, and uh, 
and uh, NTV, and then uh, another layer is the BlackBerry 10 and the uh, Nokia Java platform, and then we have another layer with uh, Samsung Bada, Samsung Tizen, and the first initial efforts we're doing, which for us are very important in the, in the car automotive industry. Yeah. That's great. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, a sound tracker is a way for people to experience music. And one of the key uh, barriers that you find these days is the fact that people uh, find it hard to cross uh, share uh, tracks, especially if they are on a specific music streaming service. Whilst with sound tracker, I guess you can uh, cross share with friends wherever they are, as long as they are joined to the platform, right? Yes. I mean, we, we work very closely with Facebook. Uh, on this one, they've been incredibly helpful for us. I mean, they really helped us uh, greatly. So users on Soundtracker can uh, basically play and uh, share actively and passively their music shows on their timelines, on their music collection. Um, you can actively share music from your player. It shows up on your feed. Your friends are able to see you in the music feed. And that helps uh, helped us uh, uh, greatly. The same we did with Twitter. So when yep. you share with Twitter, we have Twitter cards which is basically an, a better an extension of the multimedia content we have, so both large pictures and back content to the streaming. So these are like things that helped us uh, dramatically uh, in allowing uh, you know, cross-fertilization of users. And now we are heavily investing in Google, Google Plus, yeah. Google Plus sign in, friend finder, share. These are all things that are coming um, in Q4 and in Q1 of next year in multiple platforms. That's great. And so uh, looking at, uh, you know, I'm exploring the app as well uh, as we speak just to find little nuggets of, of, uh, of subjects to, to, to address as well. You know, uh, the, the trending feature is quite important because it feels like, you know, it really gives you a sense of what's, what's happening. Uh, and is that geolocated as well, the trending, or is that across the service? No, so the trending you're seeing right now, it's the trend in, in, in London. Right. And then as more users are getting uh, onto the platform and using it, and uh, sorry, in, in a in more confined geography, the trending gets uh, kind of deeper and deeper into your geography. So the radiant depends on the amount of users and players. But you're in London. London, we have, you know, considerable yeah. amount of users. So you yeah, know, you're getting London stuff. Uh, I'm getting the trend in Washington. Friends will get the trend in Rome versus, um, you know, Beijing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's loads of dots on the map, so there's definitely a quite, a, quite a lot of users here in London. And we're going to be soon uh, launching, you know, charts. So not only you're going to be able to see trending around, uh, you know, your location, but you're just going to be able to play, you know, what's trending in Italy, what's right. trending in France, in the UK. So we're going to be launching, you know, a new features uh, before the end of the year that will allow users to basically play and discover and enjoy top 50 songs, both played in, on soundtrack in different uh, different locations, and by genre. So you yeah. can get the top 50 songs in Italy, the most played, versus the top 50 songs in rock or pop. That was like a big request from users to pre-populate, you know, make it easier on the go, on mobile, to just tap and enjoy based on the sum of what everybody else was playing in that location by January. Yeah, so ex ex exactly. So uh, something I was going to ask you about was, uh, uh, is, is it going to be possible to search for New York City and, and and explore what's happening over there, uh, for example, as opposed to just being restricted to your current location? You can do both. You can do, uh, now you can do trendy, you can use the map feature, you know, on the iPad looks pretty cool. You yeah. just move your fingers on the map, uh, relocate yourself, refocus and get the music in Beijing. Uh, soon as new people are going to be populating, pre-populating uh, based on uh, different core locations where we have the majority of users, the most active users, so users can enjoy in UK what people are playing in the US versus France. People in France can play what people are playing in Brazil and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking at uh, user base as well, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, one of the core problems that I find with services that are operating in an app form is to for users that come in and uh, perhaps don't have uh, many friends that are on the service or any friends that are on the service. And so uh, do you find that you've, you're creating a community within the service of people that wouldn't necessarily know one another because of course uh, with a nearby feature you can actually I can pinpoint people that are around me and I can add them to my uh, uh, to my list essentially and so I can I can connect with them that way so do you find that users come in without perhaps any friends that are on the service but find other people to relate to uh, within the app 
We do both. So, you know, we have a pretty sophisticated mechanism by which as you log in with your Facebook, we tell you, you know, pretty regularly who are your friends already in the service and inviting them and so forth. We're doing this for all platforms. Um, and we see an average of uh, users having between five and six friends, especially in some of the core right. geographies where we're present. And then it grows to 50, 30 to 20 people, 30, yeah. 20 to 30 people. At the same time, and even I think even more important is really what you were saying, you know, I am, um, you know, I'm a male interested in female, I'm a female interested in male or, you know, people interested in the same sex. So a lot of the people following other people happens through discovering music through location. Yeah. And that's an interesting, fact. as you know, the app also have the chat functionality, the commenting functionality. So we built in, again, another core component of uh, mobile first already at the very beginning allowed us to focus, okay, if I am in, in a place and the phone allows me to be in contact with other people, I should be able to talk to them. Yeah. So the chat was something that we built as a core component from day one. I want to be able to talk about what I'm discovering with people. Yeah. And so, of course, now chats, uh, chats app are incredibly popular. You know, uh, to name some, uh, from WhatsApp to Line to uh, to WeChat and, and, and the iMessages and BlackBerry and so forth. So, we are also in, in that trend line, uh, allowing people to discover other people and come and chat uh, on their music and you know meet them and um, make friends. Yeah, sure. And finally, you know, the the last question I know is the hardest is uh, is uh, monetization. So, is the app entirely ad funded at the moment? Uh, is is that your model going forward? No, we have multiple models uh, happening yeah. here. We have a very strong licensing plat uh, platform, so we good uh, we generate good amount of revenues from licensing the Soundtracker platform. Um, and as a white label, employers, not as a white label, but as a way of bringing Soundtracker into Toyota cars, yeah. you know, Samsung devices, uh, BlackBerry devices, to name some, right? Or or TVs and, and automotive, and that's a good line of uh, of business. Uh, the other one is advertising, and what we're doing right now, which is very successful, is uh, basically really um, allowing brands to um, uh, use the app in an exclusive way. We did a campaign with Mini in Italy, and it was very successful. Um, you know, we were happy; users were happy because you know they were on brand for our user base. Uh, of course, Mini was very happy as, uh, up as well, and we're going to be continuing doing that. And then we have uh, experimenting and with good amount of success with in-app purchase. And that's something that, you know, uh, hasn't really been uh, done much. But again, as part of our mobile focus, one core concept was, okay, we do have in-app purchase like games, you know, let's uh, prompt the users to buy stations at a, at a, you know, at a, at a, for a dollar, for a euro, for a pound. Let's prompt users to access to in-app purchase a subscription that allows them to access the charts, uh, unlimited skips, uh, you know, uh, removing the ads uh, and uh, creating uh, X amount of stations. And then the, the, the last piece uh, of this, you know, uh, plot, this approach is uh, featuring uh, you know, brands and stations. In other words, you know, as we go into Q1 and Q2, we're going to be hosting uh, artists, uh, brands, uh, radio stations as well that can have their own channels. So we enrich the experience for users um, by bringing more content or curated content or content that is relevant for specific brands uh, for users to enjoy. That's fantastic. Well, uh, it's, uh, it was a real pleasure talking to you. And uh, uh, the website is soundtracker.fm. Uh, but uh, of course, if you are listening to the show on a mobile device, uh, since, the plat uh, since the service is cross platform, if you type uh, uh, sound tracker into your uh, you know iOS App Store or uh, Google Play Store or even Windows Phone uh, Store uh, as far as I understand uh, you are going to be able to find the app so that's definitely the easiest way to access it and uh, uh, thanks so much uh, uh, Daniela for your time it was a real pleasure talking to you my pleasure thank you so much and Enjoy thanks so much app. And thanks so much for listening to the DMT one to one show. You, this comes out every week. And if you like this show, you can probably also uh, go and uh, head to digitalmusictrans.com to listen to the main weekly show, which is a panel on the latest news in the music tech space. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Have a great week. And until next time.